first and last, no one works like him. He built his throne up in the air, no one works like him. And called his saints from everywhere, no one works like him. He pitched his tents on cannon ground, no one works like him. And broke oppressive kingdoms down, no one works like him. Oh, he is king of kings, he is lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no one works like him. Oh, he is king of kings, he is lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no one works like him. I know that my redeemer lives. No Thank you, Emma, and thank you, Debbie. Our scripture this morning comes from Hebrews, chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? And now, here the writer takes from Proverbs chapter 3. He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. And now he returns back. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in His holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening, it's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. The word of the Lord. So there are two words in this passage that stand out. Endure or endurance and discipline. Now what do these two words have in common? Well, first is that both involve some level of pain or discomfort. And they also require some extended amount of time, prolonged time. One doesn't have endurance immediately. In the same way, one doesn't become disciplined just like this. No, discipline is doing the right thing, making the right choices, and that happens over a course of time. In particular, it's a, also a byproduct 
of the teachings that get ingrained within us over time from our teachers. So here we are today, last Sunday in the church year. Here we are making another difficult transition in the life of our church where we had so many months of beautiful outdoor worship where we could safely be together at a distance wearing masks. But now here we are indoors with no congregation. You are joining us from a live stream service. There's nothing but empty pews in front of me. Here we are in another week where, yes, we have the good news of these successful vaccines, but that's mingled with news of all-time highs in COVID cases and deaths that have surpassed 250,000 just in this country alone. Businesses continue to close, and the reality is, is there really isn't an end in sight yet. In the midst of all this, we have this passage from the writer of Hebrews that gives us two words for us to hear today. Endure and discipline. And he also provides us with two very powerful images. The first image is us on this faith journey, and we're running this race. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that God has set before us. The second image is this one of a parent and child in this relationship. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. So two important words, two important images for us to hear today as we ourselves are dealing with corona fatigue. Now let me say this in regards to that Proverbs 13 line. I don't believe that God is causing us this. I don't believe that God is punishing us. And what we are going through is a result of what God is doing to us. But I do believe that God is using these difficulties in order to teach us and in order to discipline us. God is calling us first to endure all that we are going through. Now the word endure is used three times in today's passage. It's the Greek word upomeno. Meno means to remain or abide or stand. It's the same word that Jesus used in that famous John 15 passage where he said, I am the vine, you are the branches, remain in me, abide in me, stay connected to me, meno. Now, upo is simply a prefix that means under or by. So upo meno means to remain under or to stand by. That's where we get the word endure persevere, stick with it, hang in there. In the midst of all that we are experiencing, in the midst of this discomfort and fatigue, I find it hard for me to know the right words to say. Sometimes the best things that I can say, even though it's cliche, is... Hang in there. Hebrews 12 says, despite all that you are going through, hang in there. Endure. Upomeno. And then he takes that word and he uses it two more times, specifically in the context of Jesus Christ, of what he went through. Jesus is the one who endured suffering, who persevered through the harshest of trials. Who is our shining example today? It's Jesus Christ. The one who overcame the worst pain and suffering imaginable on that cross. Follow his example. Do what he has already done. Hang in there. Upomeno. In the midst of all that you are going through. Hang in there. 
And don't just hang in there, but know that in the midst of this, God's trying to teach you something. What do you think it is that God is trying to teach you? What do you think that you are learning from God? <clears throat> you may not know yet. You may be coming up blank right now as you think about that question. And if that's the case, that's okay. I get it. Now, here is what I want you to remember, and I want us to come back to this image. This image of this long, exhausting running race. Where does it begin? It doesn't begin on race day. It doesn't begin on game day. No, it begins in the months and months prior to that in the training, in the practices. And training isn't fun. Practices aren't easy, but that's where you build up your endurance. That is also where you develop your relationship with your coach. Your relationship with your coach doesn't develop on race day or on game day. Now, it may be revealed on race day or game day, but it's not where it's developed. Now, your relationship with your coach, how you get to know one another, the lessons you learn from him or her, the trust that you build up over time, that comes during long, hard practices. That comes over countless meals shared and countless van rides. I know this firsthand. I used to live in the dorms with my players when I was an assistant coach at Metro State. And my relationship with them developed in those dorm rooms through all those countless van rides. But as I was thinking this week about that time in my life, I was thinking about another one of our assistant coaches. His name is Brady. And I was thinking in particular about one of our players whose name is Lester. Now, every weekday, we, the, all the players would head off to, stu to study hall at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we would have our assistant coaches there to monitor it. Now, Lester, like many of us, don't have, we have topics or subjects or classes that maybe don't come easy to us. They're challenging. So he had a couple of those subjects. And so Brady, the assistant coach, would leave his apartment in the evenings, and he would drive all the way to the dorms, and he would continue to work with Lester on those subjects. I know this because as I was monitoring the dorms, walking through those hallways, I would look into Lester's room, and night after night, there was Brady by Lester's side. Day after day, year after year, until that day finally came where Lester was in his graduation robe, and he was walking across that stage, and he was receiving that college diploma. We say you're, you earn your college di diploma. He earned it. He was the first person, I believe, in his family to ever receive his college degree. I think about the work and the time, the amount of hours that Lester spent in order to earn that degree, and I also think about the amount of hours that Brady was there along his side. As his teacher, as his coach, as his tutor. And I'm confident that as we are near 20 years from that time, that that relationship with Lester and Brady, that remains strong. That relationship that they have, that'll probably stay with them for the rest of their lives. And it's not because of all those games that they competed with on the same bench. I think it has more to do so with all those nights that Brady was there by Lester's side. 
We are under pressure. Upo meno. We're struggling. We're suffering. There's no denying it. There's no clear date on when this all will pass. But in the midst of this, we're called to do two things. First, don't give up. Do not quit. And do not lose hope. Endure. Hang in there. Upomeno. The second thing is this. That as we are hanging in there, be reminded that God is our coach. God is our parent. He's just not providing comfort and support. He's also with us in order to teach us something. To discipline those whom he loves. He disciplines those whom he considers his very own children. That means you. And that includes me. Maybe you are aware of what God has been trying to teach you in these last eight months. And if so, that's great. But if you don't know yet what God is trying to teach you, that's okay too. As you hang in there, keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus. We do that through a variety of spiritual disciplines, through our prayer life, meditation, being right here in online worship. We do it through our daily devotions, whether we do it individually, whether you continue to be a part of our adult, adult forum, whether you want to join us as we enter into our midweek Advent devotionals that will take place on Thursday evenings beginning December 3rd. If you want to be a part of that, let me know. We keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus by staying connected to this community of faith even when we are physically apart from one another. In the midst of all that you are going through, be aware that God is trying to teach you. Be aware that God will expose certain things in your life so that you may be aware of that burden that is weighing you down. Now is the time where God says, let it go. Now is the time where God points out that sin that keeps tripping you up. Where God's saying, get rid of it. I'm going to help you get rid of that. Allow this time for you to strengthen and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. Allow Christ to discipline you. Allow Christ to be your teacher. Allow Christ to be your coach. Amen. This week, I want to wish each and every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. I know that this Thanksgiving will be quite different than ones that we've ever had, but we still have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be fill our lives with gratitude. One of the things that I'm thankful for is being a part of the clergy of Lawrence Township, of a group of different faith communities that come together and for nearly 30 years, We've had a Thanksgiving Day service, and this year it's going to be on Zoom, and it'll be at the normal time uh, on that Tuesday this week at 6 o'clock. So look for that link, and we hope that you will join us in that interfaith celebration together. As you enter into this week, we know and acknowledge that things are challenging. We've heard a message that reminds us of a couple things. One, just hang in there. Keep hanging in there. Upo meno. At the same time, be aware of what God is trying to teach you in and through these challenges. Now, during this week, as God goes with you, as God is behind you, He is encouraging you. As God is beside you, may God befriend you. As God is above you, may he look after you. May the Lord who is beneath you lift you up in the midst of your grief and sorrows. 
And may the Lord within you provide you with love, hope, and faith. May the Lord go before you and guide you on your paths. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.